What's up everybody? It's me, Demetrius Villa from the High Speed Rail American Club. And as you can see around us, we're in a pretty special location. We are in Orlando, Florida. And because we're in a special location, we're gonna do a special episode. I know some of you have been asking for this and we're finally gonna do an episode on the Hyperloop. Let's go do it. Elon Musk is one of the greatest minds of today's age, and a couple years ago, he came up with a new idea of getting people around. In tubes. Does this have to do with high speed rail? Why yes indeed. Our first episode ever touched a little bit about this wizard tube of space science, but some people didn't quite get the science, and the topic has gained more popularity since then, necessitating an episode to give our insight on the Hyperloop once and for all. So how exactly does a Hyperloop work? If I can just stop this puck for a second and I'll be able to show you. There are skis underneath each capsule, about four skis that push air down into the capsule, into the tube actually, that pushes the capsule up and allows it to effortlessly glide along the tube. And that gets it to its ridiculous speeds that it's trying to propose too. Very similar to a hockey table. But that's one aspect of how the Hyperloop works. The other aspect is magnets. How do they work? Well, the Hyperloop capsule is pushed by a linear induction motor, similar to how a maglev, where a stationary magnet on the bottom of the tube, pushes a magnetic blade rotor on the capsule. In layman's terms, magnets push it forward. Remember, like poles repel and opposite poles attract. Now, these magnetic booster pads are spaced apart by miles within the tube since the capsule is supposed to be coasting at speeds of up to 760 miles an hour. The acceleration you'd feel is max of 1G, which is like a ride at Universal or Disney. How does it stay coasting in the tube with all that air? Well, the tube isn't supposed to have air at all, but creating a vacuum from San Francisco to LA is near impossible. So the solution? A big, giant fan in the front sucking that air out. The lower the aerodynamic drag, the faster the caps can go, so you're not hitting a wall of air. This is similar to an old race car called the Chaparral 2J, which had its giant freaking fan at the bottom of the car, sucking all the air out and allowing for a low area of pressure, which made the car so stupid fast around the corners that they actually banned the car from racing. Now this sounds fantastic and all, believe me, moving at the precipice of Mach 1 is amazing, but with pros, there are cons. The Hyperloop transports people in capsules. According to the Alpha report by Musk, the passenger capsules can hold up to 28 people. He also goes in further to say that they could potentially move a maximum of 840 people per hour, which is sufficient to move the 6 million air passengers between San Francisco and California. Compared to one N700 series chain content though, no chance. One train holds 1,323 passengers along with potential commuters in cars and future population booms, that may pose to be a problem. The passenger system of the Hyperloop would cost $6 billion according to Elon Musk. Great, let's buy it. Um, somewhere. We already know most projects tend to under allocate some of their costs, but there is a stark difference between building conventional rails and the Hyperloop. The Hyperloop needs to be tested, which means a large amount of not just time, but yes, money. Hyperloop and evacuated tube transport may seem as nowhere close to getting off the ground as flying cars. <laughs> um, however, there is a lot of science that makes sense with the Hyperloop on paper. But since we've already brought up development, what about all the other tube systems that have been proposed? For more than 150 years. Sure, magnetic levitating high speed rail has been proposed back since the early 1900s but actually started development in Germany in 1969 and Japan in 1972. Longer than 85% of our viewers have been alive. Then some things come into mind if you read all of the Alpha report and highlighted it like a madman. You can personally say that I was nitpicking but you know, what about the cooling for the fan and the cabin at that high of speeds? Water? Just water? We're sending people or basting turkeys? There is zero mention of anyone piling it in, in all the 57 pages. So it would be a computer system doing all this, banking, slight adjustments, and the sword. Okay, fine. 
then there are faster maglev systems being made capable of going that fast, scramjet supersonic flight, and high speed rail being able to push near 275 mile an hour passengers. Where exactly is the Hyperloop? But, 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 but Elon Musk can do it. <laughs> Let's first get onto level ground, okay? Now, I'm a huge fan of Elon Musk, okay? What he's done with privatizing SpaceX, what he's done with the Tesla the direct sale model of Tesla, which is a fantastic car for the city. And I admire this, you know, the personal story he had of like wanting and dreaming to become an American citizen, a legal American citizen, and getting that dream done, okay? I'm a huge fan of Elon Musk. However, as of today, Elon Musk hasn't really created anything new. He hasn't really invented anything. Now, that goes for the guy who was in my Physics 2 class during my freshman year, Physics 2 with Calculus, who said, Elon Musk invented the electric car. <laughs> he did not, okay? And he even had a, uh, whatchamacallit, one of those backgrounds of Elon Musk on his Mac. So that, that explained everything. So let's, let's explain more about, about that. SpaceX is not alone in the private space race. There are other companies too working on it as well. Competition, yes. But rockets and capsules, nothing new. The Tesla is the best-selling electric car of all time, for sure, and deservedly so. But electric cars were created more than 100 years ago, along with hybrids, diesel, and even steam-powered cars. Of course, we know who won in the end. The biggest problem with electric cars still remains their range, and Musk has done some pretty innovative things to solve that. But still, we aren't even there. And don't think the Tesla will be alone for much longer. As revealed in Geneva 2015, the Nano Flow Cell Quant F is something unheard of for an automobile. Flow batteries. It's as cool as it sounds. But back to the Hyperloop since we are talking about high speed rail, not cars. Remember the time it took to develop the German Trans Rapid? It's almost 40 years and it still hasn't been used in many places due to its price tag. And Japan is still testing out their SC Maglev. These are institutions that have had huge amounts of money to get these programs going simpler than the concept of the Hyperloop, yet they still aren't in mass use. Recently, a company called Hyperloop Transportation Technologies has taken the concept to a working process in proposing a test area in Texas and beginning to get it funded. But that's as far as it went for now. So 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, sometime this century, who, who knows? Has Elon Musk bit off more than he can chew or can he really make it? As of the creation of this video, we won't know. But what we do know, conventional high-speed rail exists. It works, it's been proven, we lack it in the United States, and we need it. So as the saying goes, let's continue moving forward. Please subscribe to the High Speed Rail America Club channel because if you want to keep receiving news about high-speed rail in general, this is what you got to do. Anyways, from Orlando to the future, we'll see you soon.